Thursday, October 4th, uh, Major Crimes Bureau, Metro Detail, assumed the handle on a burglary series occurring in the Malibu Canyon area. The initial investigation began with the Lost Hills Sheriff Station detectives. The recent burglaries occurring over the past three months have been linked to one individual. It is believed that this suspect could be responsible for similar, several similar burglaries occurring over the past two years. In each of the burglaries, food items were stolen and the time of the burglaries ranged between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. Detectives developed an investigative plan after reviewing key evidence, including vid a video depicting the suspect in one of the recent burglaries. The plan included a coordinated comprehensive search of a vast area located in the heart of Malibu Canyon. Earlier today at about 10 o'clock this morning, Major Crimes Personnel, Lost Hills Sheriff Station Personnel, members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Aero Bureau, and members of the Malibu Search and Rescue Team deployed resources in the Malibu Canyon uh, area to be able to conduct a detailed search for the suspect and evidence related to these crimes. After several hours, investigators observed fresh boot prints in the ground leading up to a steep ravine approximately a mile north of Mulholland Highway and west of Las Virginis Road. With the assistance of air support, detectives followed the boot prints approximately 50 yards. Shortly after that, they heard movement amongst the brush, followed by observing a male adult wearing black clothing walking quickly who resembled the suspects in the burglaries. Air support confirmed the individual's location and it was learned that he was armed with a rifle. Investigators contained the suspect in the heavy brush area and ordered him to drop the rifle and surrender. After a few tense moments of communicating with the suspect, he opted to surrender and was taken into custody without incident about 3.20 this afternoon. The rifle was recovered and the suspect was transported to Lost Hill Sheriff Station where he is being booked on a, for an active no bail felony parole violation warrant. And, uh, Detectives arrested 42-year-old male suspect, Anthony Rauda. The suspect does have a, a criminal history with various weapons violations and burglaries. Let me kick it over now. Uh, I'm joined here by uh, Senator Henry Stern, representing the 27th Senate District. Spell Senator? Uh, please, uh, the Senator? Uh, Anthony Rauda. I'm sorry. Uh, R-A-U-D-A. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff. I, uh, I'm here on behalf of the community we represent in the Santa Monica Mountains, Malibu, Calabasas, Hidden Hills, Agoura, unincorporated LA, and frankly, much of that region of the Southland has been on pins and needles uh, since we learned about these series of burglaries. And I think that residents in the community can rest a bit easier tonight knowing that someone has been apprehended and also rest a bit easier knowing that the men and women in this department and in the other agencies collaborating in this effort from state parks um, we even had search and rescue uh, deputies out there who are on reserve I mean you're talking about a true collaborative effort this is not easy country uh, these are steep ravines complicated territory and uh, what looks like a very complicated suspect here um, so we're incredibly grateful to the sheriff and uh, all the state and local partners as well, especially our, our men and women at Lost Hills Sheriff Department. Uh, they keep us safe and sound as a matter of habit uh, in that part of Los Angeles, but tonight um, they're a little safer and a little sounder. Uh, so thank you and uh, here, to, here to help and assist as needed. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I'd like, now I'd like to introduce Public Safety Superintendent Tony Hoffman from the California State Parks, who was a great partner throughout this uh, series. Hello. Uh, collaborative effort was mentioned, and I want to express our deepest gratitude to the men and women of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Sheriff McDonald, Captain Ty from Lost Hills, and of course the Major Crime Unit. Uh, without their efforts, the, this arrest wouldn't have happened. Uh, there are other partners that have helped along the way, including the California Highway Patrol, National Park Service, the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority, and uh, um, everybody worked real hard, and we're very happy with the culmination of the arrest of this burglary suspect. 
Let me open it up for any questions. Please keep in mind there are certain things that this is uh, very early in the investigation, particularly as it relates to the suspect. So we'll answer what we can, but please understand uh, for that we can't. Pete? Sure, beyond the possession of the rifle itself and for whatever parole violations, any of the evidence taken shows this guy is tied to these multiple burglaries in the area? There is evidence to indicate that. Uh, the prudent uh, uh, charge to book him on tonight would be the parole violation. And then we can investigate. We have time to be able to dig into the, uh, uh, the components of those crimes. I'm jumping a little bit here. I noticed that homicide is not here in here. Have we done enough of an investigation on this that we are still open to the idea this man may be tied to Tristan Baudet or no at this point? Uh, you, we can't say no at this point. Certainly that is going to be part of the ongoing investigation. Uh, homicide is working closely with uh, the rest of the team. How would you describe him, and what exactly was he doing in the wilderness for presumably this great year? Yeah, I don't know that we know that yet, and the people who have spoken with him directly are not here. Uh, they're out dealing with uh, the interviews and, and the, the work that needs to be done tonight. And, uh, you know, keep in mind that this is a, just a couple of hours old that he's been in custody, and so I'm not sure where they are in the investigation as it relates to digging into his personality, his background, his motivations, but um, we will get there. Where exactly was he living? Uh, don't, I don't have that information at this point. I don't know if he was living in the brush or if there was housing up there. We'll find that out. We saw a number of bags being carried mm -hmm. out of evidence. Can you tell us a little bit about what was in those bags? Not yet. Yeah, too early. <laughs> Can you talk more about all the different burglaries that you believe it's linked to? We can't say how many it's linked to. We're looking at a number of burglaries that occurred uh, going back to October 10th of 2016. Uh, in the unincorporated area of Calabasas, uh, October 28th of 16, um, also at the uh, building was broken into a few miles north of Malibu Creek State Park, uh, at the ends of Public Park in the city of Calabasas, March 8th of 2017, in the 26800 block of Mulholland uh, Highway, uh, in the unincorporated area of Calabasas, there was another one, um, June tw July 27th, 2018. Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center on Malibu Hills Road in Calabasas. September 24th of this year, 700 block of Malibu Canyon, unincorporated Calabasas. September 30th, 26800 block of Mulholland Highway, the unincorporated area of Calabasas. October 4th of this year, 700 block of Malibu Canyon, uh, unincorporated Malibu area. And then October 9th, 27. A uh, thousand block of Malibu Hills Road, Calabasas. So we're looking at uh, the, those are the burglaries in the area. We're looking at any tie or uh, investigative leads into any connection there between the suspect and those burglaries. You, you said when he was arrested that you noticed that the people there noticed that there was he, he was on. How did that go down? How did the arrest go down? And were you worried that he was going to open fire at any? Well, certainly, uh, I haven't talked to the detectives who were actually there or read any reports from that, uh, but I do know, based on the terrain there, that it's uh, heavy, heavy vegetation. Uh, the detectives work in that area, searching an area like this, certainly put themselves in harm's way to make the arrest. Uh, the individual, as we can presume, uh, was very familiar with that wooded area and potentially uh, could have been a threat at any point to the detectives doing that search following footprints, uh, which ultimately, when they found the footprints, led to the, uh, the individual just 50 yards away. So a very dangerous um, search, and thankfully it worked out as well as it did. Uh, restraint, I, I would say, certainly on the part of the detectives, but also, uh, you know, we don't know enough yet to be able to say uh, what the suspect's uh, perspective was or uh, positioning relative to the detectives. Sheriff, a uh, question regarding the rifle that you recovered. What type of rifle? Yeah, we're not, in, not going into any of that yet. Is anything tied to reports of shots in the area? I mean, have you got the same caliber weapon, something along those lines? Yeah, we won't go into type or caliber or anything like that at, at this point too early. Okay. Why is his face covered, sir? Thank you for that. We covered his face because uh, we don't know what else he may have been involved in, if anything, and we want to be able to preserve the integrity of a photo show-up. Uh, should that uh, be a, an investig uh, a helpful investigative tool. So we don't want to, you know, 
uh, limit our, our options as far as the investigation goes. Can you talk about his priors? Uh, basically, uh, just in general terms, weapons violations and burglaries. Do any of the videos that are, were taken at any of the places he broke into match what you have here in this man? Close uh, enough match? Gener generally speaking, yes. Yeah. Do you believe he acted alone? Uh, there, th those are the indications we have at this point. Yeah, there's, there's nothing I have seen or am aware of at this point to indicate uh, a partner or others. How was extensive what? was the camp area or the place where your, your deputies and detectives actually took him in. Was this an established hide that he had set up, water, food, everything else? Yeah, I don't have that, Pete, yet. Yeah, they, they wrapped up what was out there. They processed the scene, but I don't have the detail on that. Sheriff, we have indications that he's also from Florida where some of these violations occurred in the state of Florida, and is that where he was originally from? Or is he you, have, you have more than I do then on that. Yeah, I don't have that uh, Florida information. With these violations and these burglaries, were they in Southern California? Yeah. Uh, do we know that? Is it? Huh? Yeah. No, all we have is the general terms on that uh, background information. How long has he been out of jail? Do you know that? No. No. Real preliminary information at this point. Sheriff, sure, sure, you talked about, I imagine, a huge undercover operation the last several days. You had a big search up there Saturday. Must have been a lot of public, you know, like the plane blows. Mm -hmm. You talked about that. It's, just, it's a big area of the center. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. No, we had, uh, we had a lot of people up there who have plain clothes assignments, some undercover assignments. Uh, they were involved, but uh, likewise, we had uniform patrol deputies up there. We had search and rescue uh, reserve deputies as well. Um, you know, there were a lot of people involved in this, and we were using a lot of tools and tactics that I wouldn't go into specifics, but um, that we were hopeful would be helpful uh, that day. Fortunately, we were able to get back today and isolate uh, a more refined area and then the detectives were able to make the arrest this afternoon. And I imagine it's just because that area is so wide with the canyons and so forth that I assume this guy could hide out right there for so long. And then you guys are looking for him, he's still in Florida. Yeah, it's a very large area, and trying to be able to uh, limit the amount of search area to something that was doable, something where you got to keep in mind the tactics you have to employ when you're searching an area. You don't want to expose yourself to potential danger either any more than, than you have to. Uh, and, and I mentioned earlier the, uh, the actions the detectives took this afternoon did put themselves in a position where uh, they were potentially uh, vulnerable in a very difficult uh, ravine area to be able to take this guy into custody. We're thankful it worked out as well as it did. He was about a mile to a mile and a half from the road area. So he was in, in a ravine fairly well into the woods. So the people who live in them tonight you are confident the investigation is moving forward to find the person that is an alleged sniper that's been hiding out the river? Not at this point. We will continue the vigilance that we have uh, been conducting up to this point. Uh, we will not uh, back away from that uh, until we can uh, you know, follow the investigation further to be able to rule out that there were any additional uh, suspects involved or that there are that this suspect is not the the uh, one tied to some of the other activity. Did he say anything to you when he was arrested? I don't have any of that information yet. The detectives were out at the scene and uh, they then took him to Lost Hill Station, so I, I was not there for that. They were mostly outbuildings uh, on, on the, in the wooded area. Uh, there, there was also a uh, the Las Virgenes Municipal Water District, uh, a building there. The rest of them uh, not identified um, by any specific building, but I, my impression is that they were outbuildings. There are reports that in uh, prior security video that he was seen in tactical gear and was carrying a rifle. You talked about the weapon. Was tactical gear found on him? I don't know that it was found at the scene. Would you classify what he, Eddie, you want to talk? Just what he was wearing. Um, you yeah, see? Um, Eddie Hernandez, uh, captain of Major Crimes Bureau. Uh, no, it's not. It actually looks like some type of, um, almost looks more like a Under Armour type of material. Um, obviously, again, I wasn't there either, but I, I spoke to the detectives, and that's definitely not a vest. 
it's all black and it looks like some type of nylon type of uh, Under Armour type of uh, uh, material with what he was wearing. So, Captain, by tactical gear, are you talking about things like either body armor, helmets, <coughs> low bearing equipment? Any of that found at all? Uh, no, none of that was found. Thanks for that question. Actually, on, on that witness, uh, major crimes detectives follow up with that witness. Uh, we had a uh, forensic sketch artist come out, and um, that sketch, um, after reviewing it and comparing it to the evidence we had, <coughs> we're able to determine that that individual who contacted that uh, employee was either a, a hiker or just in the area actually legitimately asking for a ride. That is, um, well, that's, that's in the area where they actually um, detained him. Um, that area up there with the circle, uh, that's also, that's more of a, a, um, a um, elevated view of where he was. And the one in on the bottom is just, uh, just to show how steep some of those ravines and some of those climbs can be. It's open area, and then it goes into um, uh, you know, heavy brush. No, that's just to show you kind of a, a um, put put the the terrain in, in context. So he was over past that hill. Uh, I'm not certain about that. We just again, it was just to kind of give you guys a context of because we we're talking about vast area, we're talking about uh, uh, steep ravines and stuff. So that's just one of the ravines that they had to uh, climb to to keep going on there. Yeah, occasionally we do have uh, transient types living in the parks, usually down along the coast where there's better resources, and uh, that's where we usually concentrate our efforts um, against illegal camping. Will you be advising the Pomona campus, the Pepperdine campus, that it's okay to go back into the parks? Uh, we never advised them that it wasn't okay, so uh, if they reach out to us, we're happy to answer their questions. Sure, if they and advise their students not to go to the Pomona Security mm -hmm. Park, what would you say? Captain, uh, captain Josh Ty is the uh, the captain for Malibu Lost Hill Station, PHAI. Sir, can you repeat that question one more time, please? Captain, uh, Pepperdine asked, advised their students to stay away from Malibu Creek State Park with the arrest of this burglar. Would you say to Pepperdine that it's safe to go back into the park? Absolutely, and I think we have been doing a lot of proactive approach and proactive uh, patrol in the area with the assisting with uh, state parks and working with their um, Department of uh, Public Safety to make sure that people are safe, the students and the park goers. So I, I, guess what, I guess what I'm confused because we're going to go out to Calabasas tonight, we're going to go out to Malibu, and all of these people are going to say the same thing to us. Is there still a sniper out there? And so we don't really have the answer to say to them. So are we still advising those residents to be vigilant and to and to be mindful of their surroundings, or can I sleep a little better tonight? Sure. Um, absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously, there's always that uh, precautionary, and uh, there's still investigation beyond this point. And I think the, the community still should call us if uh, they see anything that is out in the ordinary or something that uh, worth for us to look at. Uh, we're still going to uh, provide uh, active patrol th um, through the area. Um, obviously, it's not going to stop here. It's, we're going to continue our efforts to make sure the public are safe. But if you're saying that this is not the sniper in the park, then... We're not, we're not, we're not saying that. We're saying that the investigation is its very early in the investigation. The suspect was only taken into custody a few hours ago. So we're not going to say that yes, he is, or that no, he's not. We don't have that information yet. There'll be a lot of work done. We've got a weapon in custody. Uh, ballistics tests will be performed on that, among many other uh, scientific tests to be able to, uh, 
to try and tie the individual to crimes or to eliminate them from potentially from other crimes. Do you have any evidence that he is linked to those shootings? Too early to tell. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that. No, Anthony Rauda was the name that uh, that we have. And uh, we don't know his military service, Marines. We don't know. Yeah, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much.